Okay, so I left off here at parameter and um, I think I want to talk about statistics just a little bit more because where parameter becomes important is really how it relates to, to a statistic. Now, let me talk about that a little bit more. A statistic is a numerical summary of a sample. Okay, now numerical summary is a fancy word for a number, right? Numerical number. So the statistic is for the sample, C, S, and S, and parameter is a number that represents the population. P with P, parameter, population, get it? Okay, so let's think about this. Um, advertisers in general really want to know um, how many 18 to, to, to 49 year olds are watching a television program. That's like the sweet spot for, for money for advertising on VTV. So what they do is they figure out, okay, how many 18 to 49 year olds are watching it in our sample, you know, pick a TV show, how many 18 to 49 year olds are watching it? And then we infer from there, see from inferential statistics, that that many are watching it from the population. So if like, you know, I don't know, 30% of 18 to 49 year olds are watching this one television show, then they're going to infer from that that 13 to eight, excuse me, 30% of 18 to 49 year olds in the whole of America are watching it, if that makes sense. Okay, so they're not quite the same, but you use inferential statistics to get from the statistic to the parameter. And that jump from statistics to parameter is really where the whole last chapters 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's where all of that comes in, right? How do you make a jump like that? How do we know it works like it, it does in the sample? And the answer is we don't. We just know that it's very likely, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So let's talk about our individuals right here. So it said, um, a study involving 5,000 individuals with hypertension is da, 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 and has found that 80% of the individuals are able to control their drug with hypertension. Okay, that's an 80% from that 5,000. This 5,000 is the sample right there. So this is, is a statistic. It's a number that came out of that sample. Technically, the 5,000 is, is a statistic as well, but we're not going to get into that. Okay, so the 80%, which were the people that are able to control their hypertension with the new drug, that is our statistic, okay? It's a number that came from our sample. Now the parameter is the proportion of persons in the whole population who could control their hypertension with the new drug, okay? So that's the parameter. It's how many or what percent, excuse me, of all the people on the planet or perhaps all the people in the US or perhaps all the people in Sweden. I mean, it depends on where you're where your study is focused, but all the people who could control their hypertension with this new drug. Now, the interesting thing about it is that you don't really know the value of the parameter, right? This doesn't really tell you what it is. So we don't know what it is. We know, we don't know what the entire percent of the entire population with hypertension could control it with the new drug. We don't know that. We don't know if it's 70% or 90%. We know that it should be close to 80%, but the should has a lot to go along with it that we're going to be talking about in chapter one. Namely, it depends on, you know, was your sample unbiased? Did you do it in a, in a way that had an effective control group? Um, control is kind of a big deal with, with drug trials, you know. Um, are you controlling for age, gender, race, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, did you take a sample that was unbiased? I mean, if you only look at, uh, I don't know, 10 year olds, <laughs> is that as effective as looking at a wide range of people? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I mean, it just depends. And so in, in this whole should thing, we're just going to touch on it lightly here in chapter one, but this is where some big problems can come in for you if ever you're involved in, in science. Um, because uh, trying to make it so that you have an effective control group and are doing everything appropriately and not biasing yourself in any way can be really tricky, even with working th with things like Petri dishes. Um, did you leave them out of the fridge too long? Did you leave one group out longer than the other? Did you take one group out but not take the other group out? That kind of thing. It can be very, very tricky. Okay. So our next batch is to determine the difference between qualitative and quantitative variables. Well, let me fix that image. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry about that. I forgot to just kind of go over the process of statistics here, but it's everything we were just talking about. You identify what you want to study, you go collect data, you describe what you saw with graphs, pictures, numbers, and then you infer from there how the rest of the world works. And that's basically the whole shebang of statistics in one little box.